Hey there! Today we'll have a look at a pretty big one. This is the uh, Gamma Jumbo. And I um, I have to say, I, I, I saw this model, I got quite a couple of review requests for Gamma pens. They're handmade pens from India. I saw this model and I fell in love with it, and I, I asked um, Kevin from Fountain Pen Revolution if he could send me one for review purposes, and he did. And I think this pen has a lot going for it, I have to be honest. Um, my experience with Indian pens has been mixed. Some are very mass-produced, very cheaply produced. The handmade ones, I think, are a little bit better in quality, and I think this one is very neat. A lot of Indian pens also have piston fillers. This is a humble eyedropper, but I think it performs very well for what it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the very top of the cap. You see there's pretty much nothing, it's sort of an eye because it's all clear, uh, interesting finial, and then you have the clip. Now you have this really skinny thing there, I'll come back to that later, and then the threads, uh, with the, with the, I guess that, that is, I don't really understand how this works. There's threads on the inside of the cap, but I don't really know how that all comes together. In any case, here's the clip. The clip is very tight. Um, Big cap, big barrel. We're not talking, I mean, this is not a baby sized pen. It's big. The cap unscrews with a pleasant amount of threads, I would say. And then uh, you have the nib. Now, it comes with a standard nib, which I'm assuming is Indian. Kevin told me he would upgrade the nib to a German nib. Uh, and these nibs, the pen is $44, the nib is $7 extra if you want to exchange nibs and then you can get extra fine fine medium and broad and even a flex nib. The feed is ebonite which is interesting, uh, easy to adjust to other nibs by heat setting if you want to, to play around uh, with that. I can already imagine people asking me if you can put on a noodler's Ahab nib for example. I think it should be possible because that's a number six size nib too. Then we have the section, a big lip there and then a taper right there. We have threads. The section is completely transparent so you can see the nib set in there as well as the feed. Then you have a big barrel. The, have, the barrel holds about six milliliters of ink which may not sound like a lot but if you imagine the average uh, converter is about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 milliliters of ink you can imagine that six milliliters will definitely last you quite a while and being a demonstrator model you can also use it as a level when you're doing carpentry work. Okay, you have this big solid blob at the end of the barrel which does not hold ink. Uh, that would be hollow too. I think you could easily add a, a milliliter, a milliliter and a half of ink to it. Um, but you have that and actually I don't think that's a bad thing they did because that really makes the pen nicely balanced. Eyedropper filled pen, very simple system. You unscrew the section, you put in ink with a pipette and you screw the uh, section back in place again, occasionally uh, greasing up the threads with some silicon grease. And there you have it. Now what you get for $44, that's not extremely cheap, right? You can buy a Lamy Safari for $25, um, but then you don't get a 6 milliliter ink capacity. And to be honest, I was very pleased with this pen. Big, oversized, the way I prefer my pens but it is well made. There are not really that many sharp edges. You can feel the threads a little bit, you can feel the top of that lip a little bit, but in all I think the pen is very well polished. It's nice and clear, it's not cloudy um, material, and you can see that in this end here too, for example, it's really nicely polished. So I think that is very very cool. The giant ink capacity is very nice. I mean that if you write a lot, this works well. Um, that's very neat. Um, I like it. Now, if I have to mention a couple of things I don't like so much, I know that this section is not going to be for everyone. It's definitely girthy. It's definitely big. If you have smaller hands, you're probably not really going to appreciate this, but then you shouldn't buy an oversized pen, <coughs> right? Um, so that's... Uh, I think that's a bit of nitpicking. Um, the one thing I will say is the clip is ultra tight, so I think you can get this into a shirt pocket, but you have to probably be a little bit careful. Um, 
and also the the uh, the cap you could say is a little bulky uh, that does not bother me so much but if i have to nitpick uh, it's it's quite bulbous um, posting i think it would be nice if it could post a little bit more deeply because now it becomes enormous on the other hand this is a pen that does not really require posting because it's more than big enough to be used unposted but for people who really like to post their pens this is not really it the final thing i will say is i find this end thing at the cap a little bit odd it's a a, a really big cap as you can see uh, and then you have this very skinny finial which to me looks a little bit out of proportion but again <coughs> that's nitpicking now what you want to know is how the pen writes. Of course I'm going to do a writing sample. Uh, I found this nib to be to offer quite a bit of feedback. I have not smoothed it, I have not tuned it, I have not done anything with it. A little bit of feedback. Uh, to the extent that it is getting in the danger zone where it may become scratchy. To be honest, because of the shape of the pen, how nice I, f I find it to the touch, very smooth, very well polished, and the big girth, I find it so comfortable to use, this may sound strange, but the feedback does not really bother me. It is a fine nib, so it is going to offer some feedback anyway, and again with a bit of tuning you may be able to smooth it out and not really have any issues anyway. So uh, uh, the verdict is going to be out on that, and of course this being a number 6 nib with an Ebony feed, you can put on a lot of other feeds. I'm looking forward to putting on, I have a, an oblique double broad Knox nib for example, I think that's going to make this a stunning pen. So, I think it's a very cool design, a very cool model. If you like oversized pens but you don't want to spend 400, 500, 600 dollars on one, 44 dollars and you can have one. Kevin, thanks so much for sending me this pen, I really appreciate it. I'm sure the viewers will appreciate the review of a Gamma pen. As I said, I got a lot of review requests for it, so that's very cool. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, measurements. Uh, the weight in all is 34 grams. Cap weight is 10 grams. Body 24 grams. Capped, it's uh, it's pretty long. It's uh, over uh, six inches. Uh, uncapped is 141. Uh, sorry, sorry, 147.1 millimeters. That's 5.79 inches. Uh, posted. It's enormous, 182.6 millimeters, uh, that's 7.19 inches, uh, so beyond what is really practical, I would say. Barrel diameter 12.6 to 15.3 millimeters, or 0.49 to 0.60 uh, inches, and the section diameter is 12.5 to 14 millimeters, 0.49 to 0.55 inches. We need to see this pen in action, that's what I'm going to do next. I hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. All right, so here we go with the Gamma Jumbo. The nib is fine, and the ink is, I think this was Akamon Royal Blue. But I wonder if it was not Pelican, Pelican Royal Blue. Well, in any case, it's a Royal Blue. As I said, there is some feedback to this, but I do not find it scratchiness. And what I mean is, for me, scratchiness is unpleasant. It gives a scratchy, scraping feeling as you write. I do not get that with this pen, but it is not a very ultra mirror finished smooth experience either. Do some fast writing. There you go. Um, writes well, does not skip. I like it. Wetness. I actually found this pen, for especially for a fine nib, to be on the wet side. The Pelican ink is not the wettest ink in the world, but it, as you can see, it's, it's definitely a well-tuned nib. Line variation. You can definitely squeeze out some. And the feed keeps up pretty well with that too. And of course, the moment I say that, it runs completely dry. Uh, but so far, I have not really had issues with it. Again, it's not supposed to be a flex nib, so don't expect that. If you want that, you should buy the flex nib upgrade. Okay, reverse writing. 
you can do that and then you go to an extra fine nib given that this is a fine. So, thanks a lot to Kevin. If you want one, go to fountain pen revolution.com com and that's all there's to it. Hope this was useful and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.